maksudnya. Baik. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahillahi rabbil alamin wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in fa inna nawaina at-ta'allum wa at-ta'lim wa at-tadhkur wa at-tadhkir wa naf'a wa al-intifa' wa al-ifada wa al-istifada wa al-hasr. Ala at-tamassuki bi kitabillahi wa sunnati rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi sallam wa ad-du'a ila al-huda wa dalana ala al-khayr ibtigha wajhillahi wa mardatih أقر به وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى فاللهم أخرجنا من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمنا من نور الفهم وافتح علينا بمعرفة العلم وسهل أخلاقنا بالحلم وجعلنا مما يستمعون للقول فيتابعون أحسنا اللهم اجعل أعمالنا خالصة لوجهك ولا تجعل فيها حظا لغيرك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك آمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته عزيبرا Uh, so we continue, and this week we 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 were doing what is called the marfuat, the marfuat, right? You know what the marfuat are? All the things that are in alat or rafa. So previously, you would have noticed that all the literary devices that we had been studying were those things, those causes for something to be alat or rafa, right? Excuse me. Whether it was the mubtada and the different types of mubtada, whether it was the khabar and the different types of khabar, whether it was uh, uh, the fa'il, right? Whether it was the uh, kana, right? And the ism of kana and the sisters of kana, right? All of those were literary devices that causes a word to be in halatul rafa. And therefore, we term them as the marfu'at, right? The things made rafa. So we move on now in 1.6, and I am on page number 19. We move on now to really what is the, the, the most nuanced hal that you will find in the Arabic language is nas, right? While something can be, whilst you can figure out the reason for something by the process of elimination for halatul jar and halatul uh, arrafa, right? Oftentimes you would be hard pressed to do that in relation to nas. So these lessons now until the end uh, will be very important. And uh, so remain awake there in. Insha'Allah, because the first few will be easy for nas, but eventually we will come to causes for nas that is interpretive, right? You will see a word in halat al-nas when you have to decide what it is according to the context and, 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 right? Okay, so let's start with the, with the, with the they're all easy, uh, but let's start with the more straightforward ones, and then we'll go to the ones that have more nuance. The first of them, is in, right? So that's why I say, uh, the, the notes say khabar inna and its sisters. Why does the note say khabar inna instead of inna? That says khabar inna because our focus here is that the khabar of inna will be in halatun nas. And we are focusing now on those things that are in halatun nas and the reasons therefore. You understand? Tayyip. So let's read. Uh, adding inna or one of its sisters, as we will come to see, inna, lakinna, anna, ka'anna, right? All of those have the same effect as inna. So if you know the rule for inna, you know the rule for its sisters, just as uh, when you learned the rule for kana, you knew the rule for its sisters, uh, such as laysa, um, uh, asbaha, and the like, right? So adding inna or one of its sisters to a noun-based sentence effects three changes. So this is, will be very similar to kana, but opposite. So the first thing that you should notice here is that the particle inna enters upon a noun-based sentence. Enters upon a noun-based sentence. So you shouldn't be able to find inna fa'ala 
right? You shouldn't be able to find inna yafalu. You shouldn't be able to find inna fuila, inna yufalu. You shouldn't be able to find that. Make sense? You shouldn't come across a sentence like that. Because inna only enters upon a noun-based sentence. And the difference between a noun-based sentence and a verb-based sentence is only one thing. The noun-based sentence starts with a noun and the verb-based sentence starts with a verb. You understand? So the first point that we learn over here is what? What's the first point? Inna enters upon a noun-based sentence. Inna enters upon a noun-based sentence. And you understand what I mean when I say enter the, enters upon, right? Noun. So that's the first thing. Now, when inna enters upon a noun-based sentence, so... Oh, yeah. um, I lost the actual video that I wanted to <clears throat> So, why is this important? It's important because uh, I I would I hope that in your Arabic journey you will come to read unvowel texts. Right? You will come to read unvowel texts. For example, this is, uh, 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 what is this? Tafsir ibn Kathir. So there's no vowels in this Tafsir ibn Kathir. So when you come across the word inna, how do you know that you're looking at the inna and you're not looking at the im? One of the ways is that if the word im is followed by a verb, in yafalu, then you know this is not the inna. Because the inna cannot enter upon a noun. I mean, a verb. It must enter upon a noun. So now you will read it. In yafal. You will read it as that. In shartiya. If. Make sense? So uh, these are some of the ways that the, the, the inna or understanding where inna can be applied. These are some of the ways that its usage is valuable. Right? When, you, when you're reading an unvowed text, for example. So, number one is that uh, a meaning change will undergo or will take place, as we mentioned with regards to the to the um, to kana. And what's the effect of inna? To remove doubt, but primarily emphasis. Primarily, it provides emphasis. So you can translate it as indeed, readily, certainly, undoubtedly, surely, right? Anything that gives the idea of emphasis. Then the second type of change, so the one type of change is a change in meaning. The second type of change is a change in terminology, right? And what's the change in terminology? That, let's take an example. Allahu <laughs> ghafurun. How do you translate that sentence? Allah is Ghafur, Ghafar, Yaghfiru means to forgive. So Allah Ghafur. Okay, let's do this. Ar Rajulu Kabirun. Ar Rajulu Kabirun. The man is big. Okay. Ar Rajulu Kabirun. The man is big. Ar Rajulu is in what hal? Alatu Rafa. Why? It's the Muqtada. Kabirun is in what hal? Rafa. Why? It's the Khabar. Why? It's the Khabar. Now, I add Idna to the equation. And I say, Inna rajula Kabirun. Inna rajula Kabirun. Alright? So now, the Muqtada the first change that, and that takes place is what? Is that the muqtada now becomes, we don't call it the muqtada anymore. What do we call it? The ism of inna. Right? 
And the ism of inna will not be raf, rather it will be nasb. And the second change is that instead of just calling the next word, the khabar, what do we call it? The khabar of inna, right? We call it the khabar of inna, right? So that, and it says this changes to raf, but it was always raf, right? It was always raf. So that's how it works. Simple, straightforward. Everyone understands? Any questions? No? Okay. So then he gives us the example. Allahu ghafoorun. Allah is all forgiving. Is an by sentence. When inna is added, inna Allah ghafoorun, then uh, indeed Allah is all forgiving. So you can see the first change is the change in meaning. There by that, indeed. Right? Shouldn't do that. The second change is the change in terminology. The word Allah used to be the Mubtada. Now it's the Khabar of Inna. It used to be in Halatul Rafa. Now it's in Halatul Nas. Right? And the word Ghafur, it remains in Halatul Rafa. But instead of calling it just the Khabar, we call it the Khabar of Inna. We call it the Khabar of Inna. Right? Next point. Okay. So who can give us the rule that's far without looking at your page? We said four things. The first thing is what? Inna enters upon a noun-based sentence. Right? The second thing is what? It comes for emphasis. Counsel, emphasis. The third thing is that the mubtada becomes the ism of inna. And it's halat al nas. And the th fourth is the khabar becomes the khabar of inna and it remains in halat al Okay, simple, easy. And the nice thing about inna Allah and anna Allah is that. By now, you've read the Quran so much that there is no way you will read in Allah. You can't do it. I tested students before. I gave them an unveiled text with that sentence. They would read it in Allah all the time. So that's that's the benefit. So what we're doing is just coming to know that the, there's actually a rule that's governing the choice we're making in terms of putting i'rab, putting encasing on the on the sentence. Okay. The fifth point that I want to mention to us here is that a similar point that took place with Kana, that just like Kana had sisters, yeah. so too does Inna have sisters. And in the same way that when we learned the basic rule for Kana, we could apply that same rule for the sisters of Kana, so too. Now that we know the basic rule for Inna, we can apply that same rule for the sisters of Inna. Right? So the next question is, whatever are these sisters of Inna? Where do they live? Are they in school? Are they not in school? Right? So here's another example. Anna Allah. Why is this the man who's not cool? This should read that Allah is for forgiving. So just correct that in your notes. Maybe everyone has that. That Allah is all forgiving. And Allah ghafurun. So the same thing applies 
the ism of anna is always nasb and the khabar of anna is always is always rafa just like the ism of inna is always rafa and the khabar of inna is always nasb i mean opposite right Sorry. so the systems of inna have the same effect on a noun by sentence as in what are the sisters inna anna ka anna la kinna laita la al right so what are they inna anna ka anna la kinna laita la al six of them one two three four five six they must know them by memory right I'll test you next week when you come in the class. I'm going to ask you, what are the sisters? What are inna and the sisters? You have to tell me, inna, anna, ka anna, la kinna, laita la alla. Very simple. Inna, anna, ka anna, laita, uh, inna, anna, ka anna, la kinna, laita la alla. Inna, anna, ka anna, la kinna, laita la alla. Inna, anna, Right? Very easy and simple. Okay. So, what are the meanings? You can just read it over there. Inna means indeed. Anna means that. Ka'anna means as if. Lakinna means but or however. Later means if only. La'alla means perhaps. La'alla means perhaps. Nah. Okay. So that is that is that. Now, another very important point that is mentioned over here is, and oftentimes this will be the case. Oftentimes, you will have inna or its sisters with an attached pronoun. What is the condition of that attached pronoun? Right? You understand the question? For example, let me take you to something else that you know, and then I'll explain. It's simple, but I'm going to explain it anyways. For example, you have an ism. You have an ism. When you have an ism, the word bait, and I attach the pronoun huwa to that ism. How do I read it? Bait plus huwa. Let's consider that bait is in halatu rafa, for example. Bait plus huwa will be bait hu. What if I add hiya? Bait, bait ha, right? So what does bait hu mean? His house, by to her, her house. Okay. What hal is the word? What hal is hua in by to who? Char. What hal is it? Char. Why? Mudafun ilay. Everybody knows that? Time. Everybody knows that? Mudafun ilay. So, what's my point? My point is that. Depending on what the pronoun is attached to, it will have a hand. So when the pronoun is attached to an ism, it's mudafun ilay. And the mudafun ilay is always in halatun ja. I'll give you another example. Daraba. Daraba means he, one male hit, right? What if I say daraba who? It, it or him. Darabaha. He hit her. Darabahum. He hit them. The word them or the word whom or the word whoa. What hal is it? Nas. Ahsanti. Why? It's mafulun bihi. That's the mafulun bihi. Whenever the pronoun is attached. To a fi'l, it's ma'ful and bihi. Whenever it is attached to an ism, it's mutafun ilay. Whenever it's attached to inna and its sisters, what will it be? The ism of inna. It will be the ism. Excuse me. 
it will be the isim of inna. You, you get the idea? Now. So now you have a few rules that you can keep in mind. Whenever the pronoun, I have a, a, a attached pronoun and a detached pronoun. Whenever a pronoun is attached to an ism, it's mudafun ilay. Whenever a pronoun is attached to a fi'al, it's maf'oolun bihi. Whenever a pronoun is attached to inna or its sisters, it will be the ism of inna. And if it's the ism of inna, what hal will it be? Nas. Then hal it be nas. Inna hu kabirun. Certainly he's big. Inna hu alimun. Certainly he is all knowing. You understand? So that's the point that is being made here. Inna and its sisters are particles and can take an attached pronoun as the ism inna. For example, innahu, innahum, innaha, innahunna, innaka, innakum, innaki, innakunna, innani, inni. What's the difference between innani and inni? Same thing. Innani and inni. It's supposed to be inna na and inna. That one is repeated there, right? The second one should be inna na and inna. Like inna a'atayna. Certainly we have given. So just correct that last one. Okay. Now... I'm going to explain to you the next two points and then I will assign uh, if I get dragged out of here for going over time, page number 20 is homework, right? So I'll go back to the lessons. So thus far, everyone still with me? We mentioned now six points, all right? Do we mention six points? The first point is that it the inner and its sisters enters upon a noun by sentence. Inna has the meaning of uh, of, of, of emphasis, right, or the removal of doubt. When inna enters upon a noun by sentence, a term and a, a change in meaning will undergo, will take place. And that first change is that it will give emphasis. The second change is a change in terminology that the khabar of in the, the, the mubtada will become the khabar of inna and it will be nas. And the, the ism of inna, excuse me, and it will be nas. And the uh, khabar will become the khabar of inna and it will remain in halat al Right? Then we said, just like kana has sisters, so too does inna have sisters. And in the same way that we have already learned that kana and its sisters share a, a rule, so too does inna and its sisters share a rule. So the same rule that applies to inna applies to anna. Ka'anna, lakinna, laita, la'allu. Then, because, not because, but inna is a particle, and this particle inna can have an attached pronoun. When it does have an attached pronoun, then that pronoun will be the ism of inna, and it will be in halatu nas. will be in halatu nas. Okay, so it's going to make two more points to us. And that is the point of the khabar. So if you go back to the to the, the, the marfu'at, the things that we learned to be in hala to rafa, then one of the things that we would have studied is the different types of khabar. And we said that the khabar can be an ism, it can be a jumla ismi, it can be a jumla fi'liya, it can be a harjar ism ajroor, or it can be a Mudaf uh, 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 um, right? So, in the same way that all of those khabars can apply to a simple sentence, it can also apply with the khabar. Make sense? The same way the mubtada could have been any one of those, the mubtada can also be this. The khabar in, I mean, Yes, the same way that the khabar could be any one of those, so too can the khabar of inna be any one of those mentioned. I think I may have like, unclarified that point. The same way that the ism, 
the jumla fi'liya the mudaf mudaf mudafin ilay the jar majrur right um the yes the same way that all of that could have been the khabar so too can it be the khabar mm. make sense so if you want to see if you want to see what he means by this point then revisit the lesson on the khabar right for example inna allah or let's say inna rajula um Malik al bayt Certainly the man is the owner of the house. So here yeah, you have a, a, a ism, a ism of inna, and you have a mudaf mudaf in ilay. So inna rajula, certainly the man, fil bayt. You have a jar majrur, right? Uh, inna hu, fa'ala hu, certainly he did it. So there you have a uh, inna hu, certainly he, or inna rajul, certainly the man, daraba hu hit him. So there you have a, 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 a verbal sentence as the as the You see that? Fine. So the, that point is understood. Next point. Last point. The khabar of inna can be delayed to after the ism inna as explained previously in the delayed muqtada lessons. The khabar of inna can be delayed to after the ism inna as explained in the previous lessons. I don't understand this point. Yes. Yes. Must be the Isam of Inna. Must be the Isam of Inna. Can I borrow your mushaf? Must be the Isam of Inna. It's a typo. What is an example of this? An example of this is anyone has a 15 line? No? Unable to operate. Unable to operate this. Okay. So, the, the what is an example of this? I want to give you an example of this. So I don't want to misquote the ayah. The example. Hmm? Number eleven. كأن في أذنيه وقرا. Excellent. كأن وقرا في أذنيه. So please correct that. The ism of inna can be delayed to after the khabar inna. Khabar inna. As explained previously in the delayed muqtada lessons. Now it makes sense? Sorry. The interesting one comes in Surah Baqarah. You 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 came across it? You didn't do Surah Baqarah yet. Yeah. Because it's not only delay. Um, I don't know. Okay. Next goes,
la aya la aya tin la aya tin di bulina right so what's the point the point is that the word aya check it in your Quran will be aya tin now at tun at tin so what hal is the word atin here Nos. One, the cover of the The cover of Inna. So what is Inna? She called the Samoa to one of the one here in the Yon Ari, what to fill the discussion with the back in my town, and the man from the Kana, the Ari Fahia, the other Ari Fahia, the Ari Fahia, the Ari Fahia, the Ari Fahia, the Where's the where's the where's the cover? Where's the issue of Inna? Right at the end of the verse. Ayat. So go to that. It's in Surah Baqarah, right? And go check it out. See if you can see if you can appreciate. I can't. Uh, like I said, I have. I don't know what verse number it is, but I'm only able to locate it in the top three lines for that. But it's coming to say so we suffice for that, inshallah. Uh go to that. Anyone find it? We're looking for it. No. Don't you have a searching app on your phone? So that we can get the first number. Anyone? No. Hmm. I mentioned I didn't mention the data. What's the what's the verse? So a bakara one. One sixty four. Does it actually say Ayati? Ayati excellent. So a bakara one sixty two. Right? I remember this verse more than I already thought it was when we first year the Amina. The Khabar of Inna is so far away. The, the, I mean, the Ism of Inna, you can see it's like four lines, and then you only get the Ism of, the Ism of Inna. So, if there's any verse that illustrates this last point, then it's that verse, right? Then it's, then it's that verse that the Ism of Inna can be delayed to after the Khabar of Inna, as explained previously in the Kilai lessons. So, can you tell me where's the Ism of Inna? Where's the Ism of Inna? Where's the Khabar of Inna in that? Everything of that. What type of cover is that? Half child is mentioned. The half child is a majority. But you already know that the half child is a majority, is not a real. So there's actually something else there that's not in the verses. But for our purposes, the cover, the cover is the, the half child is a majority that comes. The camera of the three half is an hour to go to the right? Okay, so that's it. That's an interesting one. Take it down as a note and then do number 20, inshallah, is no more. Um, and then we'll come to Nas, inshallah, right? And the Nas is going to be very interesting. We had an Akhtafi, wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.
Alhamdulillah.